Today we begin looking at one of the major real world applications of systems of equations, and that is linear programming. Linear programming was developed in the 1920s, uh, primarily by the manufacturing industry who was looking for a way to know what was the best place to use their resources, how much of each different product should they make and produce in order to best use their resources and, of course, to maximize their profit or minimize their costs. So this process was developed for that purpose. We're first going to learn how you solve a linear programming problem, and then we'll look at the real-world applications. We solved these in Algebra 2, so hopefully this will come back. When you do a linear programming problem, you're going to be given a function that you're asked to either maximize or minimize. In this case, we're going to try to find both the maximum and minimum values for this function that I've given you. Notice it's a function in two variables because it's written as f of x comma y. So we have 8x plus 5y. So we are looking for coordinates to put in here to figure out which set of coordinates will make that have a maximum value and a minimum value. The key thing, though, is the constraints. The constraints are what prevent you from having an infinite answer. I mean, if we could go infinitely large, the maximum would be impossible to find. So it's these constraints that put limits on what our variables that can be that help us then to narrow down and find the maximum and minimum values. Okay, you'll notice here I have four constraints. I've listed them in the order that uh, the textbook lists them. I'm going to actually start with the two on the bottom. The two on the bottom are what I call the common sense constraints. X is greater than zero and Y is greater than zero. If we're using this to figure out production levels, you can't produce a negative amount of items, so X and Y will typically always be greater than or equal to zero. It's kind of a common sense thing. Now the other two inequalities, they are what's really putting limits on how big X and Y can be. Because if we have 3x plus 2y it must be less than or equal to 18, we can't have very large numbers included in that. So in the process of linear programming, what you're going to do is you're going to graph all these constraints that limit you. And from that graph, we will be able to determine the possible values where the maximums and minimums occur. So I'm going to actually work from bottom up because I like to get those two easy ones on there first. We need to graph x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0. So I'm going to put that across there, but unfortunately I'm too high. Let's try again. So we know that those would be our horizontal and vertical lines. Now, since this is inequalities, you also need to shade. So where would those two be shaded? Well, of course, if x is greater than 0 and y is greater than 0, we are going to... We know that it's going to be above the x-axis and to the right of the y-axis. Now, you won't want to go crazy with your shading on linear programming problems because it's just going to get too messy. So I'm just running a shaded line in there to show, okay, I'm on that side. I'm working in that region, that first quadrant region. Okay, the real constraints still come when we do the diagonal lines that are about to happen. Now, you can change these into slope-intercept form if you really want to. But given that there's a good chance you might get a y-intercept that's a fraction, that might, wouldn't be such a great idea. So I'm going to suggest instead that we do the good old faithful, let's put in our t-table, sub in some zeros, and see what we get. So if I put 0 in for y, I'm covering y up here. I've got 3x equals 18, so therefore x equals 6. And if I put 0 in for x, I'm covering x up, 2y equals 18, and I have 0, 9. If I plot those coordinates, 6, 0, and 0, 9, I am then ready to draw a diagonal line through those points. And now, I also need to check, though, which side of that line would I be shaded on. That's really big. So I need to go back and actually figure out how do I know where to shade. In this case, since it's not isolated for y, I can't just look at the less than or greater than. Um, if you recall, back in Algebra 1, you tested a point and Algebra 2. So if I can sub in 0, 0 here, that's the easy point to test. Is 0 plus 0 less than or equal to 18? Yes, indeed, that's true. And so my shading would now be towards 0, 0, so on the, I would be on the left side of this diagonal line. So now I can see I would have a region right now that's a triangle. 
that would be shaded by all three. If I go do this again, and I do it for the second equation, I would have, once again, subbing in my zeros, covering up y, x would solve out to be 8. And if I cover up x, y would solve out to be 6. So I would be going for 8, 0. And 0, 6. And once again, let's put a line across through there. And I have as a diagonal line here. If I go look to figure out where is that one supposed to be shaded, I would once again have to test the point. The line's not passing through 0, 0, so I'm going to opt to test 0, 0. Is 0 plus 0 less than or equal to 24? Sure is, that's true. So I would also be shading towards 0, 0. And so if I was to do that with this second diagonal line, I would still be on the inside of it as well. Whoa. And so where would all of these regions be overlapped and intersecting? And yes, I have a nice region, a four-sided figure here. Come over, hit the first diagonal, then come up, hit the second diagonal line. I'm talking about this region in here that I'm attempting to shade pink. Okay, in a normal linear programming problem, oh wow, this is what's supposed to happen. That kind of blurred together a little bit, but in a normal learning linear programming problem, this is the type of thing you should get. You should get a constrained region. Okay, if your constrained region does like this one and all the uh, I guess points are what we call convex. If they bend outward, the whole everything bends outward, that will have both a maximum and a minimum. Now, if you have a region once defined and it's what we is not convex, it's concave where it comes in, then there is not a guarantee that you will have both a maximum and minimum. You may have one. And then occasionally, and you are going to see some, if you have um, a region where we have a couple lines here going in different directions, and it actually ends up that the shaded region is out here in no man's land in this open space, okay, it can have a solution, typically a minimum, but a solution is possible, but not a guarantee. There could be no solution. And we are going to see some of those as well. So in our particular case, ours was what we call convex. It was our points were bending outward. And so Hopefully you'll recall that the masters, mathematical masters who eventually who came up with this method actually proved of all those points we have shaded, we have that entire pink region shaded, which points might be the maximum and minimum values? Well, they actually proved that it has to occur at the vertices of the shaded region. It's not going to be the points out in the middle somewhere. It's going to be one of the corner points. So you're going to have to go through and identify all the intersection points. And so if we do that, we have 0, 0 here. This one to the right was 6, 0. Its friend up here is 4 over 3 up. And the top left one was the point. 6. So then the question is, what do you do with those coordinates once you find, found them? Well, the whole point was you were trying to find the maximum minimum values of this function. So therefore, we simply go take those values and we put them into 
the function to see which gives us the largest value and the smallest value. I'm going to see if I can box this off just a touch so we don't get lost in the shuffle here. And so, okay, I need a space here to go ahead and write this. And so I need to take those four points, 0, 6, 4, 3, 6, 0, and 0, 0, and I have to sub them into that function to see which gives me the highest and lowest values. I'm rewriting the function down here just so I can see it better. So you're actually going to sub in 0, 0, 6, 0, 4, 3, and 0, 6. And you're looking to find the maximum. In this case, we're looking for the maximum and minimum values. So it's like saying if I put 0 in for x and 0 in for y, well, that's going to get me 0. If I put in 6, 0, that's going to give me 48 plus 0, or 48. Um, 8 times 4 plus 5 times 3. 32 plus 15 is going to be 47. Ooh, that's close. And last but not least, if I put in 0, 6, I'm going to come up with 30. So where did I get my maximum and minimum values at? Well, not surprisingly, you got a minimum value of 0 at the coordinate 0, 0. And you got a maximum value of 48 at the coordinate 6, 0. So if this was a manufacturing type problem, it would be saying, hey, we should make six of whatever the first item is and zero of the second item. We're going to make more money making all that one item than if we split the two apart. Now, granted, it was only by one dollar difference here, 48 to 47. So you might want to consider those. But you've just solved your very first linear programming problem. Now, however, I want to take a look at what would have happened with just one teensy change in this problem. So I've actually recreated this problem on the next page. Use the exact same constraints, exact same graphs, but you'll notice I have in blue here the inequalities. I have now changed them to greater than signs. And because they are greater than signs, I am now going to shade away from 0, 0 instead of toward 0, 0. So I have the exact same graph, but when I do my highlighting, and actually I see there I did omit my vertical and horizontal lines. I shouldn't have done that. So everything would have been shading away from 0, 0, which means then if I was shading everything away from 0, 0, those would have been shading outward. We would have had this line shading outward, and we would have had this line shading outward. I guess I got that one a little thicker. And so where would they all be intersecting? And yes, it would be clear out there in this open space. That was kind of bad. Let me see if I can do that a touch better than that. But yes, I would be talking about all this open space out here till I hit that vertical line, come down this diagonal, hit the intersection point, come back. So I'm talking about all of this out here. Well, OK, is that a constrained region? Is it bounded, is what they like to call it. And no, it doesn't have boundaries except on the one side. So therefore, we would have to consider then, we would still find the, the points at the corner points of the region. But we now know this one may or may not have a legitimate solution. So I'm going to see if I can write on here. This point out here would be the point 8, 0. This one in here is still the point 4, 3. And then up here, we had the point 0, 9. So in this case, we only have those three corners to serve as possible points here. 
Okay, realistically, given that our function has a plus in it, it's 8x plus 5y, that there's no negatives involved in this thing, is there going to be any of these going to be giving me a maximum? Well, there's no way these can be giving you a maximum because obviously it's going to get bigger and bigger values as it goes out. So this one would clearly not have a maximum. There's just no way. It's logical that this one could have a maximum. But we can check for a minimum. So to do that, we are going to sub our three coordinates we do have, 0, 9, 4, 3, and 8, 0. Notice two of these three are different than what we did on the original one. We're going to sub them in the function. And so if I do 8 times 0 plus 5 times 9, I'm going to have 45. I already know that 8 times 4 plus 5 times 3 is going to give me 47. And 8 times 8 plus 5 times 0 is going to give me 64. In this case, though, I could only be looking for a minimum, not a maximum. So I could figure out that this is minimized at the point 0, 0,9. So as far as my final solution, I would say there's a minimum of 40, minimum value, should write that. A minimum value of 45 at the point 0, 0,9. And that would be my only solution on this one because it would be impossible to have a maximum as it extends forever. Okay, I'm going to stop the video here because our last piece we're going to do is going to be an actual word problem, but in order to solve this, because we're going to be working with real-world numbers, we're going to kick to our calculators. <laughs>